when you get started, you, you put these milestones in your career. Uh, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. Uh, I need to be in these rooms or get these movies or make this kind of money. Agreed. Right. And those are not bad things to have because, you know, they drive us and they make sure we get up in the morning and hopefully do our stuff that we're supposed to do or mm-hmm. encourage us after a day of writing to go to that mixer and meet some people because, you know, it's something you're invited to and it's important to make those connections. But, you know, now that I'm like, I guess, 11, 12 years into this thing. And again, it was a very circuitous journey. Uh, I've realized the goal should really be, at least for me, and take it with Billy, to have a musical life. Mm. As long as I'm doing music in whatever format, right? I'm happy. And I try now to not be, there's a lot of double negatives there, but I try to have a very sort of wide view as to what it means to have a musical life and not be so myopic saying, Oh, I need to be a film composer. No, Mm -hmm. I just want to make music and whatever form that comes in, whatever sort of position or support that comes in, I'm happy. Couple that with, do I have what I need today? Because so much when we think about tomorrow or next week or next month, am I going to make, that's all can be very scary. And it can sort of keep us from enjoying what's happening today. So I think about, do I have what I need today? Because why am I going to let tomorrow's worries rob me from today's blessings? So those two things in concert, trying to have a very broad view and not try and control where this journey takes me and just being encouraged that I've had more todays that have worked out, right, than not. That's what allows me to keep on going. And, you know, in this past year, we had a strike, as you know, and there wasn't a lot of, you know, work for us. So this was in practice. I ended up working with an artist named Tobe Wigwe, and I did a fashion show with him in Milan, Italy for Pharrell's Montclair line, right? Mm -hmm. Then I ended Mm -hmm. up uh, arranging and producing the music for a ballet in Houston uh, with his group called the Black Angels. You know, I taught, I did a composer in residency at uh, College of Columbia, Chicago, right? And I did that. Uh, so there are all these other things that sort of came in, right? That allowed me to still experience music in a different way. And I was super happy. If I had folks, oh, I'm not working on a film, blah, 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 blah. I'd be miserable. And I would have yeah. missed the blessings of these things. And these things also allow me actually to be a better composer because they're new experiences. I can, I can relate to that on, on so many levels. I think it's really easy, especially when you're younger or when you're first sort of getting into pursuing music as a career to, to be really narrow, uh, on your view of, of, of what success looks like. And I was certainly that way. I grew up, um, in a situation where both, both of my parents had successful music careers and I have been playing music since I was five. It's the only thing that I've ever loved to do. And I had a very narrow view of what a successful music career looked like, you know, to be like an artist who has albums that people listen to all over the world. I mean, the chances of that happening, regardless of whatever your connections are, are quite slim. Um, But that was what I was focused on. And at a certain point I had to, kind of take those blinders off and widen my view, all of these other opportunities presented themselves. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, I can do music and I can continue to enjoy that in my life without having to get down on myself for it not being exactly what it was that I pictured it would be. And it can take you in all of these different mm-hmm. routes. Coming coming to music and, and deciding to do this thing sort of later in life than most people would. Do you think that that was a benefit to you in your ability to pursue it in the way that you did? Yeah, yeah. No, there were two things that definitely um, allowed me to sort of make this huge leap. One Mm -hmm. was I really do believe that this was the path that, you know, God put me on. And Mm -hmm. again, it goes back to that original inspiration, which was trust me with the vision of your life, right? So I knew there had to be something good in store for me if I took this leap of faith. And the second thing was ignorance. I had no idea how hard this was going to be. Yeah. You know, I had no idea 
that how treacherous, you know, this industry is, how many people are trying to do this every single year that come from all the schools coming to L.A. I had no clue. Right. You just see the success stories. And again, not having been in music for so long, like institutional music or the industry of music for so long, I had no clue. All I had was this hubris. I had done it in software. I showed up in software. I didn't learn anything. And here I was, you know, doing well. I can do it again. So it was ignorance mixed with hubris, but also mixed with faith, right? Yeah. <laughs> that allowed me to sort of go down this path. And if you're doing this tied to financial success, that's the wrong metric. You need to do this because you love making music. You love telling stories. And you hopefully, right, love bringing joy to other people as they interact with your art. Our job as artists is to bring someone joy for the two minutes or two hours they're interacting with our stuff. Joy, educate, inspire, right? Make them feel better about themselves and hopefully make them want to make someone else feel better. That's our job. And that's the currency that we need to be dealing with, not these other things. And as long as we're focused on that, you know, and creating that, then we are successful. <laughs>